as we know, uh, Turkey Ala Sheikh has uh, recently come out and said that he wants to cap um, the pay per view prices for his events at twenty pounds or twenty dollars. I think that's like fifteen pounds UK money. And what has got me thinking is his rationale behind doing it is that the reason why um, f fight fans tend to uh, to some extent exploit the system and start streaming fights and um, illegally downloading content and illegally downloading fights and doing all of this e illegal streaming is because the prices of the pay-per-views are just extortionate and to some extent he's right um the prices for pay-per-views has skyrocketed in recent years and if you think about it we're all like fight fans we're all ufc fans we're all boxing fans um with the cost of living crisis and obviously inflation just going skyrocketing and on top of that our wages isn't like increasing in line with the prices of these um with these with the cost of actually watching these these events and on top of that that's just taking into account watching it on pay-per-view that doesn't take into account actually going to the event and buying a ticket and watching it live um it does it makes sense that a lot of fight fans um tend to just illegally stream these fights so he, his rationale is if we cap the prices of the event at 20 quid um they'll be less incentivized to do it and to some extent i think he's right i think lately um the, the the way it's been happening lately a lot of people have been um illegally downloading content and the reason is is because of the prices of the um of the events just going unbelievably high so with that being said um i as a fight fan i'm glad that um he he wants to make a stand like this because the fact is if this continues um if the prices just keep going up and up and up um pay-per-view sales are gonna plummet they're just gonna keep going lower and before you know it like um literally the sport is gonna decrease because there's gonna be less viewership over it and the reason why d sports like boxing and the ufc have these paywalls is because if you think about it the viewership for these events if you compare it to football or the nfl or nba or any of that um it doesn't even compare so football it doesn't have to have a paywall because the fact is the amount of money that they make from advertising for the event alone covers the bills for everything and then on top of that if you take into account merchandising uh, other advertising rights and such rights fees and such um literally football can cover its bases the reason why boxing and mma to some extent is behind a paywall is because th literally th the viewership figures are relatively low now if you can see on my um on my actual page you can see a graphic that's going to turn up soon um you can see how recently the the, the ufc um have actually increased the pay-per-view numbers um as the years have gone by and um it's, it's it's increased exponentially you can literally see it right there like how quickly the the, the prices have actually increased from like if you look in the year 2005 it was 30 quid that was the base price for um a major ufc event and it's all, already gone up to 80 quid literally two years ago now it's probably gone up even further and the thing that's crazy about this is um relatively speaking um fighter pay for the ufc has not gone up it's not gone up at all so with that being said the fact remains um in my opinion turkey ala sheikh is literally the anti-ufc and the anti dana white you got dana white who's literally penny pinching and not f paying his fighters properly while you got fighters like um uh, what, what's it called tyson fury who made about 200 million in his fight against um against usek i mean francis Ngannou made 8 million against um i think he made 8 to 10 million against uh tyson fury which is like 60,000 times more than he's ever made in his ufc career and he's made like tw like 10 million like 15 million against anthony joshua so he's literally set for life so while dana white is putting the pay-per-view prices up for his fans and the ticket prices for his events and um let, let's be real like he's not paying his fighters what they're worth you've literally got uh turkey ala sheikh who's reducing the prices of the pay-per-views and not only is he reducing the prices of the pay-per-views he's also um he's also increasing fighter pay so you've got a, 
fighters that are making life-changing amounts of money on these Saudi shows. And um, it is crazy because if you look at it, it's not just Turkey Al Sheikh. It's um, it's the UAE in general, like the, the 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 Saudis that are putting all this money into fight sports. They've got the PFL. The PFL, um, even before uh, Francis Ngannou signed his deal with the U- UFC, not not with um, Turkey Al Sheikh to fight Tyson Fury and um, to fight um Anthony Joshua, he, he got his deal with the PFL where he's making a lot of money through that as well. So I'm I'm just saying I'm just making a comparison between Turkey Al Sheikh and Dana White. Um, you can you can make a strong case that Turkey Al Sheikh is almost like the anti Dana White in terms of the way he deals with um, fans. He doesn't want to rip them off by constantly increasing pay per view prices. He wants to cap it, and on top of that, in terms of the way he deals with fighters, he he wants to pay the fighters what they're worth and overpay them to some extent, if you can put it like that. So tell me what you think below. Do you think what I'm saying is right, or do you think what I'm saying is wrong? Do you think um, I've got a point or you don't think I've got a point? Tell me what you think and like and subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more content coming your way. Peace.